do you go in Europe for a good time, great food, and a little history? Italy, of course. Today I'm at the Vatican in Rome. Welcome to Laura McKenzie's Traveler. Hi, I'm Laura McKenzie, and buongiorno. Welcome to Rome, one of my favorite cities in all of Europe. There is so much to do here. You know, I never spend enough time. For example, this is the Piazza di Spagna, and over here, the famous Spanish Steps, where everybody comes to meet their friends and shop and have a coffee and shop and shop and shop and shop because that is the Via Condotti where all the designer shops are. Ah, uh, Italy is bellissima, and I can't wait to show it to you. Ah, Rome, the eternal city. Lord Byron called it City of the Soul. Well, whatever you call it, as you explore this amazing city in the storied footsteps of emperors and saints, the majesty of the monuments reveals why Rome is not only the capital of Italy, but was once the capital of the world. Whether you're interested in walking in the footsteps of the emperors, discovering the treasures of ancient Rome, or walking in the footsteps of the saints discovering papal Rome, you'll make incredible discoveries that will stay with you forever. Unlike other cities, the treasures of Rome will never be locked away in dusty museums. They're on every street corner and around every curve of the road, sprinkled everywhere for all to admire. The monuments and artwork of great civilizations are here to be openly seen and enjoyed. Ancient Rome through the Rome of the New Millennium. Hundreds of years of history coexisting. Medieval, Baroque, Renaissance, all here, blending in order not to be forgotten. Rome has so much for so many, and it's all just waiting for you to discover. The best place to start is where it all began, Palatino or the Palatine Hill. The ancients believed this was the home of Romulus, the mythical founder of Rome, and remnants of early Iron Age dwellings support that belief. From there, I say, head on over to see some more modern antiquities, the Pantheon and the Roman Forum. You know, a funny thing happened on the way to the... No. The Roman Forum was the center of life in ancient Rome, social and political. Sort of ancient downtown. Once a swamp used as an ancient burial ground, the Forum became the center of Roman life in the 6th century BC, when an Etruscan king drained the land and began establishing a cultural and political gathering place. It's hard to believe that all this was buried under 25 feet of dirt and debris until the 19th century when excavations began. Today, the Forum reveals an amazing collection of ruined temples, arches and shops that, if you squint your eyes, convey the true essence of ancient Roman life. One of the most interesting monuments is the Arch of Constantine. Marking the boundary between the Forum and the Colosseum, the arch was built in 315 AD in memory of Constantine's victory against Maxentius. What makes the arch interesting is that it was built at a time when Rome was running out of money, so the builders pillaged other monuments and buildings for materials, statues, and ornamentations. So I guess the Romans invented recycling too. Next door is my personal favorite, the Colosseum. Opening for business about 80 AD, the Colosseum has long been a controversial thorn in the side of Roman history. Wow, actually being here is so special. You see it in books, but seeing it in person is really incredible. You can almost hear the roar of the crowd and the lions. Its famed architecture and bloody legacy continue to be a source of Roman pride and embarrassment. An arena of incredible size, the Colosseum had 80 numbered entrances, which allowed over 50,000 spectators to enter and be seated within 10 minutes. Wow! The wealthier and more powerful citizens sat on the lowest tier closest to the action, while the peons sat in the nosebleed seats. 
Speaking of blood, did you know that the movable wooden floor of the Colosseum was covered with sand to better soak up the blood? The blood sports were corrupt versions of the Greek games and were introduced to satisfy the Roman appetite for violence. Slaves, criminals, Christians, and political agitators were pitted against each other as well as against wild animals imported from Africa, including lions. Glorified in the Oscar-winning movie Gladiator, the Colosseum was recently restored and reopened to celebrate the holy year of 2000. I can't believe it, we are so lucky. Who knew we would get to see Julius Caesar? Yes, Julius, um, yes. how are you doing today? Yes, good? In Roma, yes. In Roma, yeah. Do you speak English? A little, little bit. A little bit, yeah? Yes. Uh, who is your friends here with you? My friend, Mark Anthony oh. and Brutus. Oh, yes, you're getting and along, and boys. <laughs> he says, don't touch my Caesar. Can you tell my friends, welcome to Rome. Welcome to Rome. Yes. <laughs> One moment. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, oh, I'll take your picture. Nice. They say when in Rome. Okay, smile. Smile. Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Say. One, two, three. Beautiful. Here's a tip. Say servicio incluso to see if the tip and service charge are included in the menu prices. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and for more information on Rome, go to lauramackenzietv.com. You know, people always ask me, where should I go in Rome? What should I do? Well, this is my little travel tip, the Piazza Navona. Here is where I come in the middle of the day for lunch. You have tons of gorgeous little outdoor cafes. You have your artists, you have your vendors, you have your pigeons and your buskers, and oh, you have these beautiful fountains. One of the most beautiful and famous squares in Rome, the Piazza Navona, is built on the site of the ancient Domitian Stadium. The fountains here are all masterpieces designed by the famous Baroque artists Bernini, Borromini, and Giacomo della Porta. The Piazza, one of the most frequented in Rome by tourists and locals alike, welcomes thousands of people every day, with restaurants and nightclubs going strong late into the night. What I love about the cafes here is that there's so many of them. You can walk along, look at the tables, read the menus, just browse until you find one you like. Ah, perfecto. I like it this one. Okay, enough lollygagging around. If it's Tuesday, it must be Rome and we have to go, go, go. Not all of Rome's monuments and historical sites are from ancient times. Italy under Mussolini remains a painful reminder to the Italians, but an interesting attraction for us out-of-towners. The Victor Emmanuel Monument was built in 1870 to celebrate the unification of Italy and dedicated to Italy's first king. But the locals don't like it and call it the typewriter. Hmm, it does kind of look like one, don't you think? It served as headquarters for Mussolini and now houses the tomb of the unknown soldier and a museum. Well, you can't leave Rome without throwing a coin into the Trevi Fountain. The most famous fountain in Rome, made by Salvi in 1735, the Trevi Fountain is considered one of the most beautiful fountains in the world and is one of the most visited places in Rome. According to legend, if you toss a coin into the fountain, you'll one day return to Rome. So far, it's worked for me. From Fellini films to fashion photo shoots, the beauty of Rome provides a natural backdrop for action and excitement with a photo op around every corner and on every balcony. You know, I'm a sucker for a great view. If I can find a restaurant that has good food and a view, that's it, I am there. So, what do you think? Ah, would you look at that. But for an even better view, you have to go further up. Actually, up, up and away. You wonder what to do with the kids in Rome? I've got it. We're going to go on a flight in a balloon. Connected to the ground at all times, you're reeled in and out like a fish. But what a ride. 
And once you get a glimpse of this gorgeous balloon in the sky, you just have to get on it. Here we go. Whee! Hang on. Talk about a bird's eye view of Rome. This is great. Hey, I can see my hotel from up here. The kids love this, and I'm having a pretty good time myself. For an adventure that's more down to earth, you gotta explore the Appian Way. The Appian Way is the oldest road in Rome, and what I love is it looks almost exactly as it did a couple of thousand years ago. My favorite thing out here are the cobblestones. If you look at the road, you'll see stones that are original. Let me show you something. Over here, you can tell the original stones because they're the great big ones. The little tiny ones over here, those are called St. Peter's. Those are new, if you can call them new. But look at this, here's a piece of marble right here. And when they didn't have stones, they just use things that were available. Like right here is an old piece of marble column. You can see the grooves. Maybe it fell down, they didn't want to use it anymore, so they used it in the road. Now, you can really get a feel for ancient Rome in the city, walking around the Colosseum and the Forum. But to get really into the old ancient feeling, you gotta come out to the Appian Way. You never know what you're gonna stumble across out here, whether you're walking or driving. It's like going on a treasure hunt. Look at this, a chariot rut. That is so cool. The Appian Way is also known for its catacombs and what looks like villas or churches along the side of the road are actually the entrance to the catacombs themselves. In ancient times, it was against the law to be buried within the city limits of Rome. So those who could afford it came out to the country for their final resting place. We're standing on dead people. It's kind of creepy, but very cool. It's places like this where you can definitely see how religion defines the Italian culture. And to really get an idea of what I'm talking about, you have to visit the Vatican and Vatican City. Created from lands donated to the church in the 8th century by Pepin the Short, Vatican City has served as the cultural and spiritual center of the world for centuries and is home to some of the most magnificent works of art ever created. With less than a thousand inhabitants, Vatican City is a sovereign state within Rome with its own flag and its own stamps. The Pope, who is the head of state, is also the supreme head of the Universal Church. And from this tiny little city-state, his influence radiates through the Roman Catholic Church throughout the world. Millions of pilgrims, tourists, and curiosity seekers flock to the Vatican every year to see for themselves why it's so special. The only way to get around the Vatican is to walk. You're gonna do a lot of walking. When you get tired, Look what I found. Turning your eyes toward the square, even when crowded, you can find solace here. Listen to the bells. Construction began on St. Peter's Square in 1656 under the supervision of the Baroque master Bernini. It's interesting that the site of Vatican City was originally an unhealthy bog known for its snakes and diseases until it was drained for the planting of imperial gardens in the first century. Under Caligula and Nero, the area was turned over to the circus for chariot races and executions. It's here that St. Peter, who is widely recognized as the first pope, was crucified, hence the name of the square. Behind the square is the Vatican Museum, home of the Sistine Chapel. Whoa, too much to see in one visit. We're gonna have to come back another day. Six acres in size, accommodating 95,000 standing worshipers, St. Peter's Basilica is without a doubt the largest, most impressive church on earth. Its domed roof is also the tallest point in Rome as no building is allowed to exceed its height. To call St. Peter's a masterpiece is an understatement. It's the crowning achievement of almost every important Renaissance and Baroque architect, including Michelangelo, Bernini, and Raphael. 
The vastness of the interior, the architectural splendor, and the historical significance of this holy place result in a stirring symphony for your ears, your eyes, and your soul. This is the second St. Peter's Church to stand on the site. Only the bronze statue of St. Peter with its irresistible, kissable toe remains from the original church. The most famous work of sculpture on display here, behind bulletproof glass, I might add, is Michelangelo's Pieta. Finished when the artist was only 25 years old, it's perhaps the most beloved and inspiring sculpture ever created. Here's a tip. Museum ticket offices in Rome often close an hour before the actual museum closing time, so arrive early. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and for more information on Rome, go to lauramackenzietv.com. So, where do the elite meet to eat and greet? Via Veneto, of course. Located just a few blocks away from the Spanish Steps, it's been called the most prestigious street in Rome. It's been a famous meeting place for the jet set for decades. And here's where to find the luxury hotels and exclusive clubs that were immortalized on film. Ah, uh, the Via Veneto, just like I pictured it. Why do I feel like I'm in a Fellini movie? It's the allure of the glitterati that enticed Federico Fellini to film several of his films here, including his best-loved masterpiece, La Dolce Vita, which means the sweet life. Harry's Bar was a favorite hangout for Fellini and his cronies and is still packing them in today. Ah, the romance and glamour of a Fellini film. How nice it must have been to live in an era and a place detached from ordinary life with an atmosphere of refined elegance that was both sparkling and frivolous. Well, guess what? You can't go back in time, but you can stay in a hotel that not only recaptures the essence of that whole scene, but was originally right smack dab in the middle of it all. Called the Magnificent White Palace on the Via Veneto, the Weston Excelsior is one of the world's great classic hotels. Where else would you expect to find what's been called the world's most expensive hotel suite? At thousands of dollars a night, this I had to see. Located under the dome on the fifth and sixth floors of the hotel, this private villa features original frescoes, marble floors, Murano glass chandeliers, and four private terraces with incredible views. And that's just for starters. Wow. Let's see if I get this right. Private elevator, private screening room, a gym, a jacuzzi, great views, up to nine bedrooms. I think I get it. It's like having your own private villa in Italy with a full staff. I like that concept. The list of amenities for this suite alone is five pages long, but the architectural nuances, 18th century furniture, and technological wonders speak for themselves. Don't you think? I wouldn't dream of walking up three flights of stairs in this suite. Oh no, I have my own private elevator. Costing around $7 million to construct, the Villa La Cupola is the largest suite in Italy and one of the finest in the world. Fit for a king or a sultan or a rock star. Hey, how about a travel show host? No, really? What else do Romans like to do? You got it. Like me, the Romans like to shop. Shopping in Rome is no blood sport. While the pace and the prices may kill you, the reward is some of the finest fashion and flashiest finds in the free world. I'm like a kid in a candy store. I want everything. Prada, Gucci, Magli. Oh, but they're all closed. How, how can this be? It's 10.30 in the morning. They close half the afternoon for siesta. When, when do they open? <laughs> I, I want to shop. <laughs> oh, those annoying holidays. But normally, the best designers, helpful sales clerks, credit cards, and convenient shipping all add up to some of the best shopping on the continent. Indulge yourself. It's only money. Here's a tip. Steer clear of children who pickpocket in groups and leave most of your valuables in the hotel safe. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back. And for more information on Rome, go to lauramackenzietv.com. A few years ago, Rome refurbished hundreds of temples, churches, galleries, and archaeological sites for the Jubilee year of 2000. So now Rome is glorious and glittering and can face the next 2,000 years with a pretty face and a hopeful eye to the future. Ah, Rome, it's a beautiful city with an incredible history and I'm really excited you got to see it with me. The problem is one visit is never enough, so I guess I'm just gonna have to come back. You wanna come? Well, definitely be sure to join me from another terrific destination somewhere else around the world. From the Vatican City and Rome, I'm Laura McKenzie. Bye-bye.